All right, I figured I'd make a video um, explaining my experience at the Sloan Sports Analytics Conference. I was about uh, two months ago at this point, but uh, better late than never. And perhaps anyone that watches this video would want to know. Um, it was my first time going, so um, if somebody's interested in how it went for me, and if they're interested in going themselves potentially, maybe this video will help you. So let's get started. I, I participated in the hackathon this year along with a teammate that I met. Um, you know, when you sign up for the hackathon, they send out a, a Google Sheets doc and you can uh, explain your proficiencies in whatever programming languages and then you pick a teammate. So I picked a teammate. Um, our prompt was, so it was the day before the conference, you fly in early and you have six or so hours to um, code or whatever. Uh, it doesn't have to be code, it could be Excel or something. But basically the prompt was, it was sponsored by Ticketmaster. They give you customer data for three different cities and customer data in this sense could be anything from demographics to income levels to interest levels in various sports, um, propensity to spend a certain amount of dollars at a given sporting event. Um, but basically three different cities, you had to select a city and a, an expansion team from any league. So you had to pick a league uh, to expand to that city. So I believe our answer was, we suggested expanding a basketball team to Louisville um so yeah about six hours to code uh, my biggest complaint was we you know we spent a long time coding worked really hard on it we had two minutes to present and we actually didn't even finish our presentation we got cut off um because what happened is we were like the third group to present and they were still figuring out like the stopwatch and when to who was going to say you know you're done you're out of time so they were still figuring that out by the time we presented they had figured it out and, uh, you know, we got cut off. So we had seen people present for more than two minutes and then it got to us and it was like hard two minutes. Um, you know, we had maybe a dozen slides with, you know, data visualizations and, and tables and stuff with good explanations, but we couldn't get to it. So, um, but it's still good experience. They selected three finalists from each category, student and professional to move on. And, you know, if you got selected, you would move on to the, uh, the next day and present in front of the entire conference. So great, great, I mean, great opportunity. It was an, a fantastic data set. Normally you had, would have to pay for some kind of data set like that. So it was very generous of Ticketmaster to let us use it. Um, you know, I think where we went wrong with our idea was we were overly, we both worked, we both work in data. So, you know, the first thing you do when you work in data and you're given a new data set is clean it, you know, a lot of data governance activities, whereas we should have just come up with a cool idea. You know, all the teams that moved on had a cool idea. They didn't spend a long time cleaning the data or anything like that. So <clears throat> that's where we went wrong. And if I were to do it again, I would just come up with a cool idea and try and fit the data around it. So <clears throat> the most of the conferences like panels, discussions. Sometimes the panel is one person. Sometimes it's multiple people. Um, beyond the panels, there was also research paper presentations. So someone would have a poster and you could go up and ask them about their research um, presentation. There were a bunch of booths. Some were big companies like FanDuel and DraftKings, um, who they were mostly there for hiring purposes. And then other booths were like startups, either looking for funding or also hiring. Um, so that was interesting to talk to those people. Uh, but the, the, the panels here were pretty good. The first one was about sports betting. I believe, uh, you know, I went to the conference on Thursday and I believe that Monday, three days prior, um, gambling became legal in Massachusetts. So it was a big deal. They were just kind of talking about the impact of sports betting on the sports industry. Uh, one of my favorite panels was the rule change discussion. So there was a baseball player. I can't remember who it was. Um, you know, I, I don't think Hall of Fame or anything, but, uh, anyway, Bill James was the star of the show. So if you know anything about baseball analytics, Bill James is basically the guy who invented it and, you know, arguably invented the entire concept of analytics and sports. So he, he had a lot to say. They overall, they were all pretty supportive of the rule changes, and they all basically said it should have been done years ago rather than, you know, dumping every single rule change, big rule change into this year. It should have been sprinkled out throughout the last decade or so. Um, 
Next, Sumer Sports is kind of a new company. It seems kind of like a consulting agency for um, NFL teams. So it was kind of a fluffy presentation, more of like a sales pitch than anything. They're a they're a closed, you know, they're not gonna they're not like an open source company giving away their data or or concepts, um, you know. But it's cool that there's a company that does that. Uh, next, there was an Excel esports demonstration. So they got data uh, financial modeling and just general Excel World Cups. So we get to see the world champions, you know, give us a demonstration. That was pretty cool. Um, probably my favorite panel of the whole week was the evolution of poker strategy. So it was hosted. The the, the um, host of the panel was this guy named Jeff Ma, who I'd never heard of before, but he. Uh, if you've seen the movie 21, he's the main guy that the main character is based off of. Um, so, yeah, they were talking about how analytics fits into poker now, which is very cool. Um, you know, I enjoy poker, but I definitely don't come at it from an analytical perspective. So it was cool to see people that do it professionally talk about how to get better and uh, what how, the way they think about the game. So uh, there was a, the head of analytics from the Miami Dolphins. She talked about... It was mostly a presentation on the business side of analytics. So in sports, we all tend to think of um, analytics being, you know, player evaluation and, and roster construction and stuff like that. But there's a whole other side, which is like ticketing and sales within the events, sponsorships. There's a whole other like business side to sports analytics. So that was kind of cool. Um, this large language model presentation was pretty fluffy. I don't think the guy actually got to finish it, so not too great. Uh, I put this again twice, but uh, then there was a, a golf analytics panel. It was okay. The, the guy who invented the strokes gain metric, which I think is the like equivalent of expected points added for football, but for golf, um, was there. Not too interesting to me. Um, the impact of Moneyball 20 years later, fantastic. Um, you know, the author was there as well as Bill James. Um, you know, they talked about Michael Lewis, that's his name. Michael Lewis is the author. So yeah, they talked about the impact of it and <clears throat> yeah, Moneyball, you know, one of the most impactful books of sports analytics. It got personally, the movie got me interested in sports analytics to begin with. So it was cool to hear them talk about the writing process and, and what they think it's it's done for the industry. So uh, Microsoft talked about, uh, this was kind of a weak presentation. They talked about, um, you know, the like different cloud products they offer related to sports, quote unquote, but I mean, it's just general compute and stuff. So you could apply it to anything. Um, Caesars Sportsbook gave a, a presentation. I met some guys from Caesars, so they told me to come to this, but uh, you know, a pretty interesting presentation about like flagging people that maybe, you know, have issues with, with gambling and, you know, how they control how people are betting. Um, the second to last one here workshop was very cool. The guy basically pulled up, you know, went line by line and created a, uh, a, a very basic model on how to beat a sports book at, uh, I believe it was picking winners like NFL money line winners. So it was just cool to see, you know, I think he worked for FanDuel. He's the head of analytics at FanDuel. And it was cool to see, you know, somebody that's that good at that uh, and an insider talk about that. So uh, very cool. And then the last of sports was just kind of a closing panel. Um, my general thoughts about everything, by the way, uh, you can find all of the, pres not just the ones I mentioned, but every single presentation, I believe, is on YouTube. Um, if you just search for uh, Sloan Sports Analytics Conference, you can find every presentation, all the whole video is there. So it's pretty cool. Uh, definitely recommend the poker one the most. So um, my general thoughts, I thought it was pretty amazing how many intelligent people are interested in such a narrow field. Like, you know, obviously this interests me, but it's a very specific application of analytics, which is in sports. And there were, you know, thousands of people there, like 3,000 people there. So um, most of the panels were great. A lot of them were like sales pitch, you know, very generic head in the clouds. You know, when I think analytics conference, I think more of the stuff like what I said about this second to last one, where there's actual code and visualizations on the screen. But some of the presentations were very, 
you know, like consulting agency, PowerPoint type things. Um, but I would say 90% of them were great. Uh, there was a little bit too much gambling emphasis, but again, gambling had just become legal in Boston like three days before. And it's, it seems like this is the name of the game these days. Everybody's gambling on sports and that's kind of the, the hot thing right now. Um, it was cool. And when you bump into, you already know that they love sports analytics as much as I knew they love sports analytics as much as I do. So it was cool to be able to talk to everybody. Um, you know, you could see people walking in the halls that are like big names in the industry. For example, I'm after the poker uh, panel, I ran into Jeff Ma in the hallway and, and shook his hand. And I didn't actually know at the moment that he was the guy that the movie was based off of, but still very cool. Um, Warden Moneyball, one of my favorite podcasts. I met those guys. Uh, the food was awful. So that's another thing to consider. Um, it was, it was expensive overall. I think it was a, you know, for the ticket and my hotel and plane ticket, it was probably like $2,000. So it was a lot. Um, I would, I would definitely go again if I were actively looking to shift into the sports business, which I'm not right now. Uh, but you know, it could be good for that if you're like trying to network and, and talk to recruiters and stuff. Um, but the harsh reality is it like, you know, working for a sports team is very cool and there's like a status aspect to that. But, uh, you know, there's so many people that want that, that, you know, the pay isn't great. You know, if you're a data scientist, you're probably making like, you know, you can make a lot more at Microsoft or something than you could at the Chicago Bulls, for example, just because so many people want to work in this industry because it's it's cool. But uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions about this conference or, you know, in general, whether they should go or not or specific questions, just just let me know. Thanks.